you know, the LGBT community or homosexuality as such with religion and at the same time how a parent and a child should deal with it because I think a relationship between a parent and child is so important. When the lights go out, it's you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan, and we are Funny and Jesse. So, right about now, we're gonna do another reaction video. Hope everybody's doing well, everybody's doing fine, and ready to just you know react with me on this one right here. And uh, before I even get to the reaction, guys, I want to thank everyone out there who've been able to give us reaction videos. You guys are super amazing. And I also want to thank the people who've been subscribing, man. You guys are just amazing. We're about to get to 13,000 subscribers, and I know we're going to get there in one week or something like that. And if you're new to this channel, we are Funny and Jesse, and we do a lot of reaction videos. Just let us know any kind of reaction that you want us to do. If you want us to do music type of reaction videos, we're going to do it any type of reaction videos we're gonna do it for you so now what we're gonna do is of late a lot of people have been telling me to react to Sanguru and of, of course Sanguru is a yogi or something like that and he's really amazing when it comes to his speech I mean he puts in a lot of effort when it comes to teaching and giving us the best of what he does and I believe that what he says it touches people's lives and whatnot and some of the things that he says it resonates with other people out there so without any further ado today we're going to react to how should we deal with homosexuality and this is sanguru so let's get it somebody has a certain kind of sexual preference which has got nothing to do with the reproductive process as such it is their personal preference because every individual has the right to do whatever the hell they want to do with their body, because it's their body. So when we discuss something like this with our older generation, they said, we are not going to debate with you as such, we're not going to impose our perspectives on you, but this is not accepted in our religion, right? So when I took a step back and I thought, how difficult it would be for kids, for youth from the LGBT community to come out to their parents and at the same time when the parents pose this restriction that it is not accepted in our religion. How does a child and how does a parent deal with it? And sometimes a parent does cut off from their child as well. So just want to know your perspective on, you know, the LGBT community or homosexuality as such with religion and at the same time how a parent and a child should deal with it because I think a relationship between a parent and child is so important, right? And to lose something on that lines is not something. Let's uh, see, uh, probably till now largely in the social space, in the media space, in the social media space, everybody is pitching either for or against. Can we for some time not pitch for or against and simply look at the issue as it is, can we? Look at me, I'm not a prude, okay? <laughs> Let that be clear. <laughs> so, when we say sexuality, let's understand this. It is something nature has put in us. Because there is something called as perpetuation of the race or the species, otherwise it won't happen. Of course, we being human beings, having more brains than body, supposed to, uh, because of that we kind of eliminated the reproductive part and just using the pleasure part of it, all right? This is sexuality right now largely in the world. But essentially, this pleasure also is come into the sexuality process because otherwise, well, if there was no pleasure to it, maybe uh, we wouldn't be born, you and me. Our parents would not have gone into it if there was no pleasure at all attached. <laughs> yes or no? So we are here because of that. So there is no denying it or putting it under the carpet, that's not the thing. But somebody has a certain kind of sexual preference, which has got nothing to do 
with reproductive process as such. It is their personal preference because every individual has the right to do whatever the hell they want to do with their body because it's their body. But if it is something harmful, you're going to cut your nose off or you're going to cut something else off, then maybe we will try to prevent you. But you're not causing any harm to yourself in that way, then it's your business as long as you do something in your private. Right now, the Supreme Court decision is just that, that what a person does in their private space is nobody's business, government need not enter people's bedrooms, that is the law, <laughs> all right? And I think it's right. But at the same time, why so many of you are upset about it or for it or against it is simply because there has been a campaign around the world. I'm saying the campaign should stop. There may be a few people who are oriented that way, leave them alone, it's their business, all right? Even if you're a heterosexual, you don't go about talking it on the street. Hello? You don't, isn't it? Because private matters must be handled that way, unless you give some sanctity to this body, please understand this. The fundamental difference between animal nature and human nature is this, we are doing the same things that they do. They are a living, they go around, they reproduce, they die. We also do the same thing. We think a lot about it and we make a whole lot of fuss about it, but we are doing the same thing. Only difference is, we can do all these things of eating, sleeping, reproducing, everything more consciously. Because of that, we hold ourselves little different from the other creatures. Otherwise, what's the big difference? You may think there's a difference, other animals are looking at you and thinking, what about you? Isn't it? So, this is the fundamental process. Now, individual people have some choices. I don't think it needs to become a national or international issue, it's their business, what they're doing. But at the same time, there is no need to campaign for it or against it. There is no need to campaign against it, there is no need to campaign for it. If you allow nature to take its course, the percentage of people who will fall that way are extremely saw, small. But because of a whole campaign going on in the world, the number of people entering that space has become bigger, much bigger than what it should be. Having said that, your parents being upset about it or not coming to terms with it, if they are doing it for religious reasons, well, there may be a lot of trash in every religion, there is. But there is also some wisdom gathered over the times in every religion, yes or no? So this wisdom, some people are calling it religion, some people are looking at it just sensibly and doing what they have to do, some people read religious texts and come to this wisdom because they're not able to figure it out themselves. So do you have to agree with all the things that they say in their religion? No. But do you have to simply blanket disagree with everything? That'll be foolish. Because human experience cannot be thrown away, isn't it? Thousands of years of human cultural experience cannot be just thrown away. We have to take what is sensible and what is not. So when it comes to this aspect, they know the consequence of this. See, when you're at this age, the most attractive word is freedom. Hello? <laughs> well, I come from the sixties. You know what sixties? <laughs> so, freedom is the word. In this… but since then I've looked at human mind in so many ways. The moment you utter the word freedom, people will end up doing freaky things. Because freedom is a consequence. It is not a thing that you do. See, freedom is not an act. Freedom is a consequence of how I experience my life. Freedom comes out of a responsible existence. If you think of the consequence, Without taking care of the process, you will always end up as a disaster. I must tell you this, well, at least twelve to fifteen of close friends that I had when I was growing up, 
they all died before they are thirty-five. Well, some of them, uh, you know, because we were living on motorcycles, they got killed in the mo on the motorcycles, rest drank themselves to death, others drugged themselves to death. At least twelve to fourteen people who were very close to me, who were around me, all died before they are thirty-five because freedom, you understand? Freedom was the real thing. They became free, free and they became free <laughs> Death is definitely freedom. So, one thing that young people should learn is, don't utter the word freedom because freedom is a consequence. It's something that you have to earn. It doesn't come as a philosophy. In sixties, we thought it's a philosophy. If you live responsibly, you will see freedom will come. When I say responsibly, not in the sense of civic responsibility, if you retain your ability to respond to life without any prejudice, without any restriction, you will see you will become free. Your ability to respond, if it is unlimited, it is freedom, isn't it? Now, coming to this religious resistance, there's nothing religious about this. Sexuality is a biological process, yes? The very fact that nature created opposites, it has some intention. Well, some people didn't take to natural ways, it's okay, it's their choice. We don't have to discriminate against them, we don't have to persecute them, we don't have to put them in the prison, definitely it's not necessary. But at the same time, it doesn't need promotion either. Now, when I say freedom and responsibility, this is like this. See, suppose uh, you want flowers in your garden. If you sit in your garden and every day do flower meditation, <laughs> flowers will not come. If you want flowers, you don't have to even think about flowers. You must think soil, manure, water, sunlight. Soil doesn't feel like a flower, manure doesn't smell like a flower, water doesn't look like a flower, sunlight doesn't feel like a flower. But if you take care of these things, flowers will happen, isn't it? This is the way life works. So the important thing with our lives is this is a very westernized approach that we are looking at the goal. We want the product, we don't want the process. No, if you're devoted to the process, if you're truly devoted to the process that you're doing right now, you will naturally do your best. Everything that you have, result will come or no? Result will come or no? It'll come. Just because you sit here and desire the result, it's not going to come. You will only have plastic flowers in your head. <laughs> flowers will not grow in your garden. So, this is a time of life. I'm surprised, uh, you know, like it's not just you. Just about anywhere I go, young people are asking only this question. What this means is, they are trying to live too early. See, this is a time to grow, this is a time to enhance yourself because your ability to enhance yourself and grow will not be the same after ten years, believe me. Your ability to learn will not be the same. Your ability to grow physically, emotionally, intellectually and in consciousness will not be the same after ten to fifteen years' time. So this is a time to grow. When it's time to grow, if you try to live, too much. Some life you want to taste, but if you try to live too much, you will see your growth will be impeded and your life will be stunted in so many different ways. So it's very important young people focus on growth because we are seeing this, you know, like I've traveled across the United States, many of these universities. It… it brings tears to me when I see how it is, I'm glad at least uh, in India, most of the students are sober in the daytime <laughs> Really, I'm telling you, in top universities, daytime they're all gone. So, we're becoming slaves of commerce. Because people have intentions to do their own thing, they're just enslaving the people, young people, because they want to sell their brand. Because it seems early age, if you get used to a certain kind of beer, that's what you're going to drink for the rest of your life. Yes, they have done research on this, universities have done researches on this, and they're supplying free beer in the school. Tell me, 
does it take a genius to understand this, that if I open a book which is of some complexity and I want to grasp this, if I'm intoxicated, can I grasp it? Hello? Is, is, does it take a genius to understand this, I'm asking? So, you don't have to… when your parents say something, they may refer to their religion because they think it's an authority. You take away the authority, just listen to the words, if it makes sense, do it. If it doesn't make sense, tell them politely, that's not the way it is with me, all right? <clears throat> Guru is just a device. Guru is not a person, this must be understood. Only when you begin to experience me as something more than a person, only then I am your guru, till then I am not. Wow! <laughs> wow! That was really amazing uh, video right there. I liked how he tackled the, the question that he was asked by that, uh, by, that he was asked by the lady. First of all, I want to thank the people who've been telling me to react to this video right here. You guys are amazing. And okay, let's go to the video. Um, how should we deal with homosexuality? I think Sanguru actually uh, tackled it in a really, really good way. And I liked how he actually um, answered the question. Okay, um, it's more of your body, you understand, you can, do, uh, you can do whatever you want to do with your body. I mean, you can do anything you want to do with your body, but at the end of the day, uh, is it making you feel better? Is it making you feel happy? Is it fulfilling what you really want it to be or what you want it to do in life? Now, um, you touched about freedom. Uh, and he talked about in the early 60s, uh, they really wanted freedom, thinking that freedom is going to make them even become uh, better people or maybe make them become even like, let's say, let's say better people, you get it. But in the actual sense, freedom has consequences, you get it. The more you become free, the more you endanger yourself to certain things and you end up actually abusing what you, you, you've you actually been given, which is freedom. And you find yourself in a certain position where you cannot um, come out from. I like the part where he say that um, whatever you do, whatever you've chosen to become, make it private. You get it? You don't have to go out there and show people like, hey, this is who I am and I need you to accept me for who I am, you get it? And it shouldn't be the matter of going out on the streets and trying to, to, uh, to you know, to make people understand who you are and force people uh, to like you or maybe force people to, 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 um, to understand that I want my freedom to be like this or I want my freedom to be in, that, in this certain way. I think it's too much of, of showing off, you get it? I think it's just too much. And with doing that, there's so much conditioning because you find out a small kid growing up who doesn't know anything about probably homosexuality, when he switches on the television and watches all those kind of campaigns and the rights that they want and all these kind of things, it actually triggers that young kid and he actually wants to know more and the more you want to know more, the more you find yourself in a place where you want to become. It's just as simple as you wanting to know exactly what is this thing, you find yourself becoming one with that thing, you get it? The more eager you want to know, the more eager you'll become one to that thing. So I, I, I think that there's more conditioning happening out there. The more they put out all these bands, the more they put out all these um, things out there to showcase how they want their freedom or maybe they, they want their rights to be out there so that they can do their things publicly or whatever the situation that is, I think it shouldn't be a thing of of making young kids uh, be conditioned into in, into such manners, and also um, just to back it up a little bit, 
this is my own opinion right here i have no problem with homosexuality you get it i know religion is condoning any act of homosexuality and religion says that it's against uh god's uh, will or something like that um for me do whatever you want to do but don't force it to people don't force it to the young kids and don't force it to the toddlers who are growing up because what normally happens is you actually find out that a small kid upon growing is being conditioned to become that and this conditioning comes from the media comes from the from the books and all these uh, new media that is out there you'll find out like all this conditioning is everywhere from the cartoons you know kids love watching cartoons yeah so they actually try to embed such an su such idea in cartoons and you know most of the time parents are not in the house and kids are probably uh, at home they want to watch cartoons and such things are being embedded in the in the the what in the cartoons so you find kids watching so at the end of the day what they get from the the media or maybe the cartoons that they watch every day is something that it will condition them to become probably homosexual uh, or homosexual or something like that you get it me i believe that a kid doesn't know his sexual needs he doesn't know that uh i mean his mind is not even thinking about probably my my, my, my sexuality or something like that you get it so as they grow and they are conditioned in that manner by the time they reach certain age they'll want to become that and i feel that's not a good way i mean do your own i mean the media should stop uh, putting that agenda out there and trying to make it look like it's a good thing you understand it shouldn't be like that let, let, let somebody has have their own choice but not force them to become i think it shouldn't be a matter of choice no i think it shouldn't be a matter of force it should be a matter of choice but i uh, today people are being forced to people are being forced to even the foods that we eat the water that we drink all these things the part of conditioning anyway guys thank you so much for uh, listening and thank you so much for being part of this reaction you guys are amazing and if you feel like i reacted to the video in a better way is to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to go down my comment section tell me exactly what you feel about my reaction and what you feel about this video of sanguru over here this was really amazing i like how he broke it down nicely and he came up to a really good conclusion just let me know the comment section below what do you think about my reaction and the most important thing guys don't forget to subscribe to our channel the making for subscribing then will give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give us a better better content if you have any kind of reaction video just let us know in the comment section below and we're gonna do it for you and last but not the least we're gonna see you or rather i'm gonna see you in the next video and peace out